Hey guys, welcome back. Looking at example number three here for the method of superposition for statically determinant beams with more than one load. And in this case, we've got a cantilever beam two meters long, and we've got a point load acting at the end, and as well as a counterclockwise applied moment. Um, so what we know so far about the deflected structures is that this is going to come out of the wall right at 90 degrees, right at that reaction, and then it's probably, just by looking at this, it's probably going to bend down, it's probably going to kind of curve back up at some amount. Uh, and we're going to find out what exactly is the slope at the end and uh, what is that displacement from its original position. So to do this, using the method of superposition, the, the actual deflected structure uh, with both loads on it is equal to the sum of the deflected structure with just the point load on it and the deflected shape of the structure with just the moment acting on it. So we can see that obviously when we point, uh, when we have a point load pressing down on it, that it's going to have the tendency to bend down like that, and then an applied moment on the end, it's going to be bending up. So it's going to be doing something, uh, something along the lines of this, basically. All right, so what we want to do is we want to go to our table for beam slopes and deflections, and there's one here on the website. You can uh, find the URL here. Otherwise, uh, it'll be uh, the link will be in the description if you're watching on YouTube, or there'll also be a little bubbly pop-up thing somewhere, somewhere over there. Um, but we want to come down to the cantilever beam section, and looking at this, this is uh, we have a point load acting at the end, and we have a moment acting at the end. Now, our moment, this moment in this diagram is going clockwise. The moment in our problem was going counterclockwise. So that means that when we input our when we input our moment into this expression, that we input the sign of our moment as negative because it's going opposite to what is on this diagram. For example, to if the point load in our case was pointing up, then we would have put p in as a negative p, so it would be like the double negative, and that would kind of cancel out. But in our case, p is pressing down, so we're going to use this formula exactly. Uh, just in this case, we're going to be adding in the moment here in negative, and we're going to be getting that dub double negative there that's going to cancel out. So let's go and grab let's go and grab these and bring them into the video. And this again was uh, these are the slopes at b, and these ones here, these expressions are the elastic curve equations. So let's calculate the deflection in system one here first. And when we get to this step, let's just check that the units cancel. So we have newtons cancelling with newtons and meters squared cancelling two of these out. So we're left with a single unit of uh, meters on top. And when we do that, in the, uh, when we put that in the calculator, we get negative 0 0.002 meters, or which is equal to 2 millimeters in the downward direction, right? That negative sign is indicating to us that uh, in the if we look at the table, we were saying that if we get y values here that are upwards, that's going to be positive. And, and so our y value is negative, and so that means that we're getting that deflection downwards. And that was based on us um, entering in our p value here as a positive because it was in line with this p on the drawing. And when we think about this, yeah, when we apply this load pressing straight down, that we should be getting a deflection in the downward direction, so it looks like we've done this correctly. All right, let's go and do the displacement from system two here now. And like I said, when we input this value into the moment here, uh, make sure that we're putting the negative sign inside that variable because this is opposite to the diagram, to the sense that's on the diagram of the applied moment that we're working off of. So when we get to the step, let's again, let's check the units. Newtons cancel with newtons. Meters squared cancel with meters squared, and we're left with single units of meters here. And uh, this is actually going to give us a positive value, and it turns out that this positive value is 0 0.002 meters. So that is equal to 2 millimeters in the upwards direction. The upwards direction is because it's positive, and I just designed this problem in this way so that we would actually get a value here that are, we're having 2 meters up from this load and 2 meters down from this load. So when we do go and, uh, and calculate for, uh, what is it? Um, yb. So this is going to be equal to yb1 plus yb2 and uh, that's obviously going to equal negative uh, 2 millimeters plus 2 millimeters. So we're getting yb here is equal to 0. I did want to use this as an example just to show you that this can happen um, and uh, to not be surprised if you're seeing a value like this on a test or something. Um, so with the, we're getting a net displacement here uh, at B of zero. So really, this first dry, this first drawing was kind of spot on. It comes out horizontal, it goes down a little bit, and it curves back up again, basically ending right where it started. Now that's the displacement is zero, but we're gonna now calculate and see what the slope is, because clearly, if it goes down, the slope is gonna be on some upwards angle there. So 
Let's go and uh, start with the slope from system one. And these units, Newton meter squared, are going to cancel out with Newton meter squared. And uh, that's just going to leave us here with uh, negative 0 0.0015 radians. And that negative sign again indicates that we're coming down like this off of the axis for the angle. And that makes sense. That's basically what we're expecting this point load to, uh, to basically generate a, a slope that would be pointing down like that. Okay, so let's go and calculate the slope at point B here from system 2. And when we include that negative in the, uh, the variable for M, those, uh, those two negative signs are going to cancel out on us, and uh, we're going to be left with 0 0.002 radians coming up from the horizontal. And again, that's basically what we would expect if we're applying a moment there. So just always do that visual check on the diagram to make sure that uh, it's the fastest way to find out if you might have made a math error along the way. So when we go to find the total slope here, the, the, the total angle at point B, it's just equal to theta B1 plus theta B2. And so that's equal to negative 0 0.0015 radians plus 0 0.002 radians. And uh, that's going to give us a very final answer of theta B is equal to 0 0.0005 radians. It's a positive value and it is going up. Basically that's what it means. It's going up in that way. So we'll throw a box around that guy. That is our other answer, more or less. And uh, when we look at the drawing here, we see that yeah, we're basically we were expecting it to be going up like that, and uh, turns out that the the final slope was 0 0.0005 radians, and the final displacement turned out to be actually zero millimeters. And if we did find that the uh, that the end slope was negative, then that would mean that we had just uh, incorrectly assumed this. Um, we would know that the end slope has to be negative, so on some kind of angle, we'd know that this has to come out. And uh, basically, the only way to connect those smoothly is to do the opposite of this. Now, if you were really curious about this, I guess I did get a little carried away in the beginning of the video by assuming it goes down like this. Um, but you could always draw the... Uh, the bending moment diagram of this and then from that you can find inflection points and concavity and you can really confirm exactly the, the, the deflected shape of structures. But even without doing that, um, by knowing the end slope here and position, then uh, we can actually get a pretty good idea of, uh, of how to draw these things.